Okay, friends, today I'm in Luminar Neo and I'm going to be talking about masking. And while I've covered masking in a number of videos over the last year or more, really, in Luminar Neo, I realized I never really did a getting started or beginner's guide for masking. So that's what this video is going to be. But I also want to point out that even though you may not consider yourself a beginner, I still think there's going to be some things in here that will be useful to you to help you really get your arms around masking and use it effectively in Luminar Neo. So the first thing I want to say or talk about is like, what is masking? I think it's a confusing topic. And the reason I'm making this video is because I get a fair amount of questions about it. And so masking, I like to think of as painting. If you have a canvas and you're painting on it, you don't say, okay, now it's time for blue and you paint blue everywhere. And then you say, okay, now it's time for green and you paint green everywhere. You just don't do that. What you do is you paint blue in the sky, green in the trees, you know, that sort of thing. And so that's what masking is. It's kind of like painting. It's effectively applying certain edits to only certain parts of the photo and making sure that you contain them into those certain parts of the photo because you want to customize and control the look of your outcome of your photo. Of course, that's really what editing is about. So there's four major types of masks or masking tools within Luminar Neo. You can use a brush, you can use a linear gradient, you can use a radial gradient, and then there's Mask AI, which does some things for you automatically. We're going to cover all those, and this is going to be kind of high level. Don't hesitate to leave questions down below. And by the way, if you subscribe to the newsletter that I put out on my website, actually include for free, one of the free assets that I give away is a short mini kind of uh, masking ebook. If you want to check that out, that link is down below. Let's take a look at this non-photo. This is a gray sheet of paper, and I've used this before because it's a really good way to demonstrate visually what masking is and how it works. Now, if you're in develop raw with the raw file, you cannot mask because you're working with the raw data, but anything sort of above that, any other tools after develop raw, you can mask. This is just a gray sheet of paper, so it's not a raw file. Uh, but generally speaking, anytime you're in a tool, you can just click on masking to get to the different tools. There's also mask actions, which will help you do a lot of things as well. But what I want to talk about here is masking. So let's say I have this gray sheet of paper, but I want to make it black in some parts. Well, if I take the exposure all the way to negative five, it becomes black entirely. But I just said I want it to be black only in certain parts, and that's where masking comes in. So I'm going to start with a brush, and you just click on brush, and you have two options, paint or erase. I'm going to paint. Size is, of course, the size of your, your brush or your paintbrush, right? So I'm going to make that kind of big. Uh, softness is, if you look at the size, let me go back to this. If you look at the size, if you don't look at the pink circle, that's my mouse. I just highlight the mouse in my video so it's easier for you to see. That will not be with, uh, with, within Luminar Neo. But if you look at the, the brush here, there's basically two white circles, an inner circle and an outer circle. Softness is the difference or the size of the gap between them. And what that means is the effect will fade from that first circle to the outer circle, which means it'll have kind of a gentle blend into the rest of the photo. I consider that an incredibly important thing because if you make a softness of zero, if you look at that, softness of zero is one circle, whereas softness of 100, you have those two circles. At softness of 100, you have that fade, the effect fading from that inner circle where you get 100% of the effect to the outer circle where it starts to fade. All that does is it blends it more naturally into your photo, which means your effect and really the difference between where you applied the effect and did not apply the effect, that difference is greater and smoother, so it's a, a simple blend. Strength is how much of that is going in at any particular time. So I've got my size and softness and strength, and all I'm gonna do is, let me increase that a little bit more. Let's make it something like that, and I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna paint. You'll notice as soon as I start painting, because I did the negative five exposure adjustment first and made the whole frame black, as soon as I start painting, it says, oh, you're painting this in. So I don't want negative five everywhere. I only want negative five where Jim is telling me to do that with the brush. And when I let go of my brush, you can see I've now painted in black. You will also notice the softness here is you're getting 100% of the black in the center area. But as it fades out to the edge, it fades out to the edge. And so let me show you the difference between softness of 100 and softness of zero. Softness of zero, as you can see, is a very abrupt change. 
It's 100% of the effect of that negative five adjustment across the entire area because the softness is zero. And that's why I'm talking about making sure that you use softness of 100 because otherwise your edit, whatever you're doing to your photo, will get 100% and then it'll get 0% and there's no transition zone, there's no fade, there's no, it's really called a gradient and that's what a linear gradient and a radial gradient will be covering in a moment. But that's what that is all about. And so keep that in mind. Those are really important things. Uh, strength is, I take that down to, well, let's call it 50. There you go. Strength of 50, softness is still zero. Now, if I go strength of, uh, I'm going to make it 50 because it's driving me nuts. My OCD doesn't like that 49. Um, strength of 50, but softness of 100. Let me show you that difference, right? So there you go. Half strength, but 100% softness. So a gradual transition from a 50% strength to a zero strength. If I go back to strength of 100 up here, but I've got softness at 100, I get more dark, more black, more of that negative five coming through, but a nice smooth transition. So that's really how the brush works. And what I wanna do is reset all of that. I'm gonna get my adjustment back to negative five. I'm gonna go back into masking and I'm gonna show you linear gradient. It's the very same idea. All we're doing is you click and drag to draw gradient. Linear gradient is a line. Uh, now, it's a straight line, but it can be tilted, uh, so it doesn't have to be a level line. I'm gonna start down below as if I was building this into a landscape, and what I'm doing is creating a gradient zone between these two lines, with the bottom being 100% that's more red, and then basically from this bottom line to that top line, it starts to fade to where you eventually get zero, right? And so I'm creating this linear gradient to mask in this negative five effect into the bottom of the photo. And as I said, I can twist this or tilt it so it doesn't have to be level, but the lines are always straight. I can also increase or decrease this area, and that's the gradient zone. So depending on your photo, you may want a really large gradient zone where it fades naturally and gently into the photo, or perhaps you need a little bit less of a gradient zone to fade it a little bit more rapidly. But regardless, as soon as I back out of this tool, you will see that I've got black at the bottom, that's a negative five that I painted in, with a gentle fade into uh, eventually going to full gray. So that's how linear gradients work. And now that I've done that, I want to show you radial gradients. Actually, I want to first drop the exposure to negative five. By the way, you can do it either way. You can create the mask and then do an adjustment, or you can do the adjustment and then create the mask. It doesn't matter. The result is the same. I bounce back and forth between them, just depending on whatever it is I want to do. So remember, I was here. These are your, uh, your tools that you can choose. I'm choosing radial gradient. I made the negative five exposure adjustment across the entire photo, but I just want it in a certain area. Radial gradients are really good for uh, creating like circular or oval type shapes. And so you click and drag, just like on the linear gradient, but instead of creating a line uh, where you can fade that effect in, you create a circular shape and that will fade the effect in. So in this case, I've got 100% in that center circle. And then as you can see from the inner circle to the outer circle, it fades to gray. And so my black is gonna be fully black inside the circle with uh, from that circle to, from the inner circle to the outer circle, it's gonna fade. Now, you don't always have to do that size or shape. You can make all kinds of adjustments. You can grab that outer uh, circle and create a tighter or less um, soft gradient. I tend to prefer a smoother gradient where it fades more gradually. You can also grab this internal circle and adjust that to increase the size. Of course, you can grab it and move it around your photo. You've also got these four little points that you can see and these allow you to adjust the shape of it. So you can adjust the shape, you can move it and relocate it, you can adjust the shape that way if you want to, and of course you can increase or decrease the gradient zone. The bottom line is it's very flexible, and despite the fact that you might think, hey, there's nothing in my photo that's a circle or an oval that I want to use, uh, or mask, it comes in incredibly handy, and I use these all the time. So when I back out of the tool, there's the shape I created, negative five at 100% in the middle, and then the generous fade, the gradient zone, fading out to gray and the edges. 
Now, one thing that's important is also these masking actions, and I'm not really going to get into that in this video, but bottom line is you can copy and paste masks from one tool to another. You can show the mask. If you want, you click on that. That shows you the red overlay for masking. You can fill, which is going to fill the entire photo. You can clear it, and you can also invert it, where I can just say, I built a mask, but I want everything but the mask to be covered. You can just do a quick invert. Mask AI, I can't cover with this gray sheet of paper. It won't identify anything, but what I want to do is show you some practical applications of masks in an actual photo. So here's a landscape image. This is a perfect example of where I would use mask to uh, get basically the result that I want. Now I've already used develop raw one time. So there it is develop. Uh, that was my raw file unedited. And there it is after a use of develop raw. What I often find myself doing, especially with landscapes is coming in and customizing the look of the light and the shadow and possibly even the color. Maybe I'll play with the sky, those kind of things. And so that's where masking comes in because you can really effectively control the look of your photo. So let's say I open develop a second time. I have masking here, and maybe what I want to do is come in and accentuate the contrast and the darkness of some of these dark green trees. Well, I can come in, get a brush, and maybe I'll do strength of 65 or something. I keep my softness at 100, and you can left or right bracket key to increase or decrease the size of your mouse. And all I'm going to do is just paint, and I'm going to do this kind of quick and sloppily simply because it's a demo. I recommend you take your time and get it, uh, making sure that you, you get it the way you want it to, uh, to look. And so masking is an important skill and being a little bit slower and more targeted with your masks uh, is also important. It's hard for me to do that very well when I'm also trying to talk to you. Uh, so I'm going to do kind of a quick sloppy job, let's call it, with some of these masks. But the bottom line is you can see the mask and that's my brush. Now I can come in and just say I want to take the exposure down a little bit. Maybe I want to darken those areas. Now, you don't want to go too dark because that difference, even if you have a soft brush, is going to show up really prominently. You can always double click a slider to set it back to zero. And let's say I just go a little bit darker, something like that. All I'm doing is creating a little bit of contrast. This is effectively what's called dodging and burning. And it's a really quick way to impact the look of the light in your photos. So there it is before a little bit brighter in those green trees and after a little bit darker. So that's one example of how I would use a, a brush mask. I'm going to open develop again. Once I close it, if I open it again, that tool is committed and everything is ready to be used again. And let's say I'm going to go in and do another brush mask. And this time I'm going to paint them in. Uh, I'll do the same thing, you know, 65, 66, and I'll paint it in over here in some of these yellows in these trees. And maybe I'll just click my mouse here a few times just to highlight a couple of little spots that I kind of like in this photo and that I want to accentuate. So my mask looks something like that. And now with adjustments, I'll come in and let's say I brighten those a little bit. And again, this is dodging and burning. This is the dodging part. The darkening is burning, which I did first. And this is the dodging part where I'm making it a little bit brighter. But as you can see, before and after. And I can close that and say I'm happy with that. And so I've just basically used a brush mask to paint in an exposure difference to make it darker in the green trees and a little bit lighter in the yellow trees. But that's effectively just controlling and using mask to target my edits to certain areas in order to make sure that I get the look that I want. Now you can use this on lots of different tools. For example, I might come into Structure AI, go into Masking, go to Linear Gradient, Remember, that's the straight line. Doesn't have to be level, but it's straight. And I want to click and drag. I usually use these in foregrounds in landscapes. This, exam, uh, this photo is a great example of that. And I'm going to do something maybe about like that. And so I'm just creating a nice kind of generous gradient zone where it kind of fades into the photo. And then I can come in with structure. And let's say I move that up to 35 or whatever the number is. All I'm doing is targeting that foreground area with a structure increase thanks to a linear gradient mask. Now you may notice that the top of the mountain wasn't really covered and so you might want to come in and you can always click on mask actions and show. You can see where your mask is. Well maybe I want some of this structure to also go into the top of the mountain. Well what you can do is after using linear or radial or mask AI you can actually come back with a brush and just paint in some additional mask of brush strokes 
into certain areas of the photo in order to include that. In other words, a linear gradient being a, uh, a line, it doesn't always perfectly fit in certain areas. So you can come back and double up, or I should really say complement that with a brush mask in order to add that structure to those areas. So now if I back out and I go into mask actions and click on show, you can see that my mask is now applied in the area that I hit with the linear gradient, but then also with the brush mask. Now, while I'm in Structure AI, it's actually a great way to demo Mask AI as well. Because let's say um, I just applied, as you saw, with a linear gradient and a brush, and I covered effectively all the mountains. Well, Mask AI can do some of these things for you. Mask AI will identify up to nine different elements in a photo. So I can click on that, and you can see it's identified sky, flora, and mountains. Well, I don't want structure in the sky, but maybe I want it in the mountains. So you can click on it once, and it will identify that area. If you decide you don't want it, you can just click on it again and it will deselect it. But I do want it, so I'm gonna go ahead and click it, and then you will notice that it's also identified flora, which is probably gonna pick up those rest of the bits in the foreground. I'm gonna click that, and sure enough, I've now got a mask that's really easily applied and really accurate covering all the mountains and the trees, which is the mountains and the flora. So now I can come over here, I've got that mask created, and I can apply my structure AI, and I'll go really high to 100 just so it's really visible. I wouldn't recommend going to 100, but as you can see, it's identified those areas. A more accurate um, use of this would be like 25 or 30, just to give it a little bit of oomph. So that's Mask AI. I could close this. Another thing I like to do is reuse tools because uh, with Mask AI, once it's identified them, it's gonna identify them again really quickly. So it identified sky, as you recall from the first one. This time I'll go in and click on sky. It'll say, hey, there it is, I gotcha and I can come in with structure and perhaps go negative, which is just something I like to do to kind of soften up skies, make them a little bit kind of dreamier. Uh, and that's all I'm doing here, before and after. But once you've used Mask AI, it will identify those same areas really rapidly on subsequent uses of that tool or other tools. So now all that's left is a radial gradient to demo that. So let me go in and click on Develop and Mask. And this time I want to use a radial gradient and you might think there's nothing here that's even remotely close to a circle, and that's true, but I wanna show you how I use them. Uh, on things like this, this top of the mountain here, I really like what's happening with the light hitting that, so I wanna come in and accentuate that. But it's not a circle, uh, but it can be a little bit of an oval shape, so I just need to come in and kind of adjust this and figure out how do I get this kind of squished in, very technical term there, how do I squish this into that area so I can accentuate that and get it looking the way I want it to look. And you know, maybe it's something about like that. I recommend taking your time and playing with it so that you do get it pretty accurately uh, applied. But I've got that radial adjustment right there. And so even though it's not a circle or an oval, I can kind of use that instead of a brush to kind of target some of those areas. And maybe what I wanna do is slightly lift the exposure, maybe give it a temperature boost of one or something, maybe a little bit of a tint Maybe I'll try some contrast. I don't really have a plan necessarily for that section other than using the brush, or excuse me, using the radial gradient to highlight it. But as you can see, you can come in and highlight an area like that with a radial gradient, even though it's not a circle, a circle or even close to a circle, but it helps you really target a lot of different areas. So before and after, a little bit of pop on that section of the mountain where the highlights are, uh, you know, where the, the sunlight is hitting them. So if you look at the before and after, it's really quick and easy to go in and use mask to target certain areas in a photo, whether it's a brush, whether it's a linear gradient, a radial gradient, or mask AI. But all those masking types are useful and give you a lot of control over where your edits go. Because if I had come in and just applied structure everywhere and light increases or decreases across the whole photo, it would just not look the same. It, in fact, it would probably look pretty terrible. And so that's why I think masking is a key skill to really elevate your editing game and get you kind of to the next level in terms of your skill level for editing and of course the results that you end up producing. It's super powerful and even though it can be a little intimidating and scary at times, you're not gonna break anything, just play around. Hopefully this gives you a good idea. You can just download a gray sheet of paper like that from anywhere on the internet or make one yourself but it's a really good way to kind of practice with masking and get used to it and what the different tools and effects and, and the sliders within the masking tools can do for you in a photo. Hopefully that gives you a good idea of how to use masking in Luminar Neo. And thanks for watching my friends. I'll be back soon with more videos. If you have certain topics you want me to cover, leave them down below. I'll be back soon. And until next time, my friends, you guys take care 
and adios.